Colonel Steve Austin, the six million dollar man, and the new Bionic Transport and Repair Station. The rocket's crashing! We'll put him in the Bionic Repair Station. We can rebuild him. We'll replace the modules in the Bionic Arm. No injury here. Welcome back to the Junk Room, everybody. It's me, the Junk Man, coming back at you. And boy, do I got a good one for you today. We're going to go back to 1975 when Kenner launched his first line of toy-based science fiction toys with the Six Million Dollar Man line. Kids of the hit TV show was excited. They finally got toys based on the bionic superhero that they could play with at home. However, when the toys launched in 1975, it was lacking some fun because there wasn't much that Steve Austin could do. Sure, they did release the Six Million Dollar Transport Repair Station, and boy was it fun. But there was no one for Steve Austin, aka the Six Million Dollar Man, to interact with. There was no boss to send him on a secret mission. There was no bonnet girlfriend for him to kiss. And most importantly, there was no villains for him to fight. It was just Steve Austin and that thermos-looking spaceship. But one department store had a solution, and they reached out to a rival toy company to help. For some, when we think Montgomery Ward, we just think of an old sign taped across the window of an old Ford. But Montgomery Ward was a powerful leading department store. And that's not even counting their successful mill order side of the business. Montgomery Ward started as a department store way back in 1872. That was 100 years before I was even born. It was one of the biggest retailers in the U.S., but it did start to lose its footings in the 70s thanks to rival department companies like Sears, Kmart, and many others. But you didn't come here for our history lesson on Montgomery Ward. Hey, what's happening? It's Pachinko, Montgomery Ward's fun new family pinball game. Pachinko is completely automatic, no hookups needed. Just flick the lever, watch the ball go round, jackpot, you win. Montgomery Ward's Pachinko is not a toy, but a genuine reconditioned pinball machine. Just $39.99 at Montgomery Ward, where you can charge it for Christmas. Montgomery Ward always wanted to have something a little extra for their stores and to sell in the mail catalog. For the Mego Action Jackson line, they would have the figure of Mego in his red jumpsuit. For Mego's Fighting Yank line, Montgomery Ward would have an exclusive Yankee Bravo and the Baron. And probably one of the most popular out of their exclusive line, they had the Seeker Identity action figure line. This was superheroes like Batman, Superman, Spider-Man in their everyday clothes. Montgomery Ward knew that Kenner's line was going to be huge in 1975. And they knew they needed to give the kids a bionic villain that they could use to fight with Steve Austin. Now it's unclear why Montgomery Ward didn't reach out to Kenner to help with this, but it's probably because they already had a good relationship with Mego and probably could get the figure cheaper from Mego. And Montgomery Ward would pass those savings on to the customer as their exclusive six million dollar man figure was about a dollar cheaper than Steve Austin. So Montgomery Ward reached out to Kenner's rival toy company, Mego, for a six million dollar man villain. It was a huge win for Mego as it was a way for them to cash in on some of the Six Million Dollar Man toy money without having to have a Six Million Dollar Man toy line. So Mego went to work to give Montgomery Ward the first Six Million Dollar Man villain. And what they came up with was one of the lamest exclusive figures ever. One that was so bad, it became so great years later. Think of it like this is the Troll 2 of action figures. It was hated, it was stupid, but that's what collectors nowadays love about this thing. It's so awful, you have to love it. The exclusive figure was Dr. Chrome Dome. And although it says doctor, I think I would like to see his medical license because I don't think this guy's a doctor at all. According to the box, he would be known as the Bionic Villain. Notice the box didn't say Six Million Dollar Man's Villain or Steve Austin's Villain. It was Bionic Villain, as that was a word Mego and Montgomery Ward could use while being sued by Kenner. The name Chrome Dome was already owned by Mego, so they just slapped it on this new toy so they wouldn't have to file new copyrights. To save money, they would also use the body of a figure from their dying toy line, Fighting Yank. So all Mego really had to do was design some new clothes, give the figure a little paint and a box, and they could have a cheap, quick, exclusive figure for Montgomery Wards. The figure would be 12 inches tall. Which is kind of odd because Steve Austin, the $6 million man Kenner figure, stood 13 inches tall. Putting the figures side by side, you can really tell a difference. 
he might be six million dollar man's first toy villain but it doesn't seem like he's much of a fight the figure will come with a metal hat covering his bald head some metal paint added to the face one metal arm and the wildest disco 70s era action figure clothes i've ever seen a shiny purple and silver jumpsuit along with a nice red cape he would also come with a long purple stick or maybe it was his mr microphone with a purple cord or maybe it was just a pimp cane this looks more like something elton john would wear to studio 54 than something someone would wear to fight steve austin the figure would come in a small window box and i guess migo was ashamed of this toy as they didn't even put their logo on the box the migo name can be found in the small print how many of these did montgomery war sell well that's unknown and it's not too easy to find today as it's one of the rarest migo toys of the 70s however it probably sold well for 1975 that was until 1976 when kenner added other figures to his six million dollar man line including two of the best toy villains of the 70s maskatron and bigfoot there was just really no need for old chrome head not after 1975 kids that had it probably threw it in the trash as soon as they got another six million dollar man action figure even if the other six million dollar man action figure was oscar goldman is that the six million dollar man's boss it's oscar goldman why do you have that that's worth a lot of money that's much more valuable than steve austin Today, the figure loose and in good condition can go five, six hundred dollars. As for it in the box, it can go for the low thousands. It's not easy to come by, and it is a holy grail item for Mego collectors, but also for six million dollar man Kenner collectors. Well, that's a look at Dr. Chrome Dome, one of the weirdest exclusive action figures ever released. Well, tell me in the comments below, did you have Dr. Chrome Dome? Did you want Dr. Chrome Dome? Or did you even know about Dr. Chromedome as a kid? And if you didn't know about it, are you saying, man, I wish I did, I would have begged my mom for Chromedome. Well, I want to thank you for watching. As always, thumb up so you like my content. Subscribe to the channel. We'll talk again soon. Maskatron, new from Kenner. Six million dollar man sold separately. Hey, jump <laughs> man channel popping though. Thank you, sir, for that unsolicited testimony. <laughs>